Hello, I am David W. Brecker. This is Programming Today I Learned. Let's get into it. Today we're going to be putting together a blog for our application. So we're going to have a post, a model that we'll be adding with a migration, adding the database table, and we're going to make sure that we can see the posts. We'll make a little spec, and this is all on Ruby on Rails today. So we'll be doing the front end, it's felt in the next one. And then we'll also be going ahead and creating, updating, deleting, and all that great stuff. So in this episode though, let's go ahead and just get started. So first thing is you're gonna run Rails G migration create posts. That'll create a file similar to this, minus the section in here. So we're gonna go ahead and say t.references user. This is gonna go ahead and make sure that we have a user ID within our table. And then we're going to say null false because we require a user. And we're going to go ahead and index on this user ID. We're going to have a string of title within our table. It also is going to be required. So we're going to say null false. And then we're going to go ahead and have a text field for content within the blog post. And we'll say that's null false. And we'll have a published at timestamp. So very, very simple table. We can go look at our schema and say create table posts. And you can see this is what it ultimately ends up creating. You can see that we have one little index there too. We're gonna go ahead and create a post model. So under our models here, we have a post. And we go ahead and automatically get annotated as we've set up already. And then what I am doing here is including a posts associations and posts validations. So I will show what those are in just a moment. And then our user here can include user associations. So what I'm doing here, and this may be blasphemy to some people, but for projects I've worked on, this has been fantastic. So we're gonna use Rails concerns on our models and we'll namespace this as the pluralized version under the concerns. And then we'll keep our validation logic in one, we'll keep our scope logic in another, business logic in another, and our associations in another. Uh, and basically, it'll keep our file sizes down and manageable, and you'll know exactly what you're looking at. Some people will say that's blasphemy and just throw everything in a giant model. Some say people will say they'll use concerns for that. In my professional experience, it's been fantastic for organizing things and makes it really easy to set up with teams. They know exactly where to look for business logic and they know exactly where to look for any kind of thing. And so I will continue to do that. So this is what it looks like. Here's the posts association. It's going to extend the access uh, support concern because it's a concern. And then inside it, we're going to say this post belongs to user. So this would be the equivalent of having just this line in our model. Now it's a lot of boilerplate, but when you end up adding a ton of different things and a ton of different files, have a ton of different places to look at what associations are which and this and that, um, and your post model or your user model or whatever ends up being hundreds or thousands of lines long, this ends up being a nice way to easily uh, find and know exactly what you're looking for. Our validations are gonna be fairly simple. We're gonna have two validates. One is gonna be in the presence for the title, Others going to be present on the content. As those are required fields within our database table here, we're going to go ahead and have the corresponding business logic as well for the validation on the, the Rails end. That way it doesn't just blow up in the database. We try to catch those ahead of time within our model. Next up, we have this users association. This is just a new association where it has many posts. We're going to go ahead and give it this dependent destroy, meaning if the user is destroyed, all of the corresponding posts that have that user ID will also be destroyed. I went ahead and moved our two validations out that we had in users. This used to be in the users before. I moved it out uh, to validations just so we can continue to keep our models as uh, small as possible. Within the routes here, we've created a new resource route on our API, VIM posts, and we're only gonna do the index action now. So this is git, and it is this URL here, git, forward slash API 
B1 posts. And that is all we have here. API forward slash B1 forward slash posts index is the git. And so let's go ahead. I didn't actually open that folder, uh, post controller. So you can see API V1. And so this looks side by side with the users one. And it's all it's going to do is going to go ahead and return a data object uh, with every post for now. And so we can go ahead and make a, a RSpec script for this. We're going to say create, this is going to say check the index, return a status of 200 with a list of posts. I have the create user, I have create post here. Create post is a new um, object trader I have here. You can also use something like Factory Girl if you'd like. I like to actually use, especially on these request specs, use fully integrated things. So I make sure I'm testing basically everything. We're going to go ahead and grab the user from the params if we have one, otherwise create a new one. We're going to get the last ID. That way we can give each of these a distinct title um, or content effectively. So post create, title, content, and the given user ID. This is a lot of active record. Now you had this here before too. We will cover more active record stuff in depth at a later time. If you have questions now, go ahead and leave a comment below. And um, yeah, so that's this. And then we have this spec here. We're going to create two posts. We're going to go ahead and say get the IV1. We're going to parse it out. We're going to check the response is a 200. And then we're going to check that the data size, so this is the data object here, is two posts. We can run it. I've already run it here. And it says it uh, was successful. And so we can go ahead and check out the coverage on that over here. You can see ran again a lot faster the second time. You can see that we went ahead and it tested post validations. The news of the present that long association as well as the post index. So full end to end test there. And so that's it for this episode. Hey, I just want to let you guys know I have a Patreon. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe. That would be fantastic. Support the channel. I also have a newsletter where I'm going to be sending out uh, weekly updates with the latest uh, episodes as well as some other useful content I found around the internets. And um, I'm also going to go ahead and continue to put, put out good content. I will be coming up with Patreon-specific content as well. So check that out. Go ahead and subscribe and like, and I appreciate it. I hope you guys found this useful, and I'll see you guys next time.